Hello everyone, this is Diane. I am going to show you just a few things I picked up at Hobby Lobby a couple days ago, and then I'm going to show you the progress that I've made on the strawberry journals, and we'll do some more work on um, one or two of the journals. I think the cover of one and maybe the pages of another. So, my daughter and I went up to the area where we do our craft store shopping, but we went up there to get haircuts. We could not get our haircut that day. <laughs> they couldn't get us in till 6 o'clock, and it was 2 o'clock in the afternoon or something like that. So we were not going to wait. Um, and then we went to the mall, and there were two salons there, and they were both closed. They had been closed for the pandemic, and they're, they're not open. They're still not open, so I don't know if they're ever going to open. So anyway, we ended up going to Hobby Lobby and because uh, I needed some red tape. And they had some paper pads on clearance, really good clearance prices. And um, the Tim Holtz stuff was half or 40% off. So I got this. This is all I got for Tim Holtz. And it's um, the Dispress Oxide Sprays in Carved Pumpkin and Mustard Seed. I love those colors. Um, I couldn't remember what colors I actually have, but I was pretty sure I didn't have these. So I need to make a, a little booklet to keep with me. Write it in a notebook of what I have in all of the distress colors. Um, so then I looked at the paper pads and realized that there were reduced, you know, the clearance stickers on some of the pads. So I only looked at the ones that had those that I had saw the bright orange stickers, except for another one caught my eye, which wasn't on sale. And I'll show you that in a bit. But this is an 8x8 pad, Beach House 2. Not something I would normally go for but it has some papers that I can use for the seashell journals and mermaid journals and <clears throat> the seahorse journals and things like that. So I already pulled some of those pages out um, and it was only 374 and I can use some of the others, other pages for other journals that aren't necessarily beach or tropical themed because I don't normally do things like that. I don't live near a beach. I don't go to the beach. I wish I could, but I don't. So I, there, there are nice papers in there, a lot of nice papers. Uh, this is some seaweed type of plant material. Some coral or, or, or more seaweed, I don't know. Lobsters, whales. I like this one. It's got seahorses on it. More whales. Sailboats, lobsters, seahorses. So there's some nice papers in there. I don't normally pick up the 8x8 pads, but once in a while I see one that strikes my fancy. This is the one that wasn't on sale, so I paid full price. They don't have coupons anymore either. I paid full price for this because I never catch the paper on sale. It's far enough away from me that I don't just go on a whim. And anyway, this is something I will use in mermaid journals and other sea life journals. Um, it's called Mermaid Dreams and it's by the Paper Studio. That's the best way to do it, like this. So this one just is light reflecting on water. Looks like uh, three of each pattern and they're foiled. This one is mermaids. Some of the pages are foiled. This is beautiful. I wouldn't use this in a sea journal. I would just use this in any other journal I want to make. There's some seashells, which I can use in my seashell journal. This just says mermaid hair, don't care. It's probably something I wouldn't even use in a mermaid journal. That one, again, is just some pretty aqua you know, like water, ocean colored flowers, so they can go in any journal. That one's beautiful. Bubbles. Mermaid tail fins, or scales, I mean. That one's really pretty. Looks sandy and watery at the same time. They almost look like the pansies. Beautiful. Oops. I don't know if you want to see them all, but I'm showing them to you all. 
I mean showing them all to you. There's some coral. More water with light reflected on it. This is just silvery with purple. I don't know if I would use that in a sea journal. I might use it for something else. This looks like um, oyster shell. It's just pretty. A lot of them are just abstract. So they could be used in lots of different things. There's water. Almost looks like marbled paper and more foiled mermaids and smaller scales. So that will be fun to use in some specific journals. Then these two were um, just on clearance and they're pads that I would use for a lot of different things and I love the blues in this one. It's called Fleur Coloré. Uh, it's 60 sheets so it's a little bit <clears throat> heavier than than the other pad which is 180 I think oh that yeah 180 sheets so those are the thin paper ones these are a little heavier but not as heavy as some of the cardstock I, I use these as pages I'm, I'm not going to show you every page of these but just kind of flip through now, some of these could be used for ocean ones too But I do like blue and white, so I really, really like this pad. And that was five forty nine. Then this one is the thin paper that's one hundred and eighty. Sheets. This is what I copy dye, and I also use it without being copy dyed. And it's the best of Paper Studio 2. So it has many different it pages from many different collections. So it's a bunch of different styles. Some of them I've had in their original collections, but obviously I liked them enough. Some of them I don't like. They're not the type of thing I would use but it was cheap enough that I don't mind having those few pages. I can use them in glue books and stuff where they're going to be covered. And that was $5.49 also. So that's what I got at Hobby Lobby besides my red tape. Now, to bring you up to speed on the strawberry journals, um, I had three covers done that I gave you a quick glimpse of in one of my videos. And I am working on finishing the fourth cover today. But this is the fabric cover journal, and I haven't done anything more to it, I don't think, than when, since I showed it to you. Um, and I've got the scrapbook papers cut. Now, unfortunately, I already had sewn on or glued on this fabric pocket on the back, and I and then I decided I wanted these on. So this is just going to go inside on one of the pages near the back, probably. So I really haven't done anything more to that. This one, um, I don't think I did add this, and I didn't put anything in the pockets yet, and I added that label and um, this label on the front. But I think all of this was already done, the lace and everything, right? Um, but I just started, I, I cut the rest of the papers today, um, and then I just sewed the lace on. So I think we're gonna do a little bit of work on this journal after I finish this cover. This journal is complete. This is the large domestic art style journal with the cross stitch beautiful beautiful cross stitch design on the front uh, it's a nice big book uh, I got these this paper clip decorated paper clip uh, in a happy mail a long time ago so I was happy to put that on with this uh, I don't know what you call these it's put on like a brad and I'm not going to do a flip through until I probably have all the rest of the journals done or almost done simply because I wouldn't mind listing it now, doing the flip through and listing it, but I want to 
use up more supplies in the other journals and then see if there's anything left to divide up between the journals. So I might do a little more, add a little more to this, or at least have a um, ephemera pack to put with it. So I don't want to ship it out until I know that there's nothing more for me to add to it or include with the package. But I am excited to flip through it and show it to you. And then I had told you in that other video where you got a sneak peek at the journals that I was going to be making this journal, it's a Reader's Digest, with this uh, vintage strawberry plant advertisement. So I've been working on that. I got it Mod Podged on. I sewed it to a piece of scrapbook paper, then Mod Podged it. And today I've just been working on putting the cover together and decorating it. And I'm all I have to do now is add some rickrack. I'm just going to put this. I don't really need to put rickrack on the inside because it's got the paper with a clean edge covering up the frayed edge of the fabric, but I, I very rarely use the baby rickrack, so I figured I I should use some. And I like the way it just accents it a tiny bit, and I like it. So we're going to use that. And I haven't used this art glitter glue on trim or fabric. I've been using my Fabri-Tac, but because this baby rickrack is so fine, I am putting this to the test with its baby fine nozzle. I think other people use art glitter glue for fabric and trims. This wants to flip over. I did end up getting my hair cut yesterday though here in the valley. The valley is the area that it's a three town area where I live. I've talked about that before. It's two towns in Pennsylvania and one town in New York and we all were nestled between two rivers, the Shemung River and the Susquehanna River and so this area is called the valley. So, got my hair cut yesterday. It's been long overdue. It, she cut off, I told her, I told her go ahead and take two inches. Might be a little more than that, but it's just so hard to tell. I mean, often I think that they've taken off more than I've told them to, but my hair is so curly and I think the, sh the shorter it is, the curlier it is. So it might just look like more has been taken off, but it's still below my shoulders, so that's okay. And it's just that I like to be, I need to be able to pull it back in a ponytail. I cannot control my hair in the summer. It's bad enough in the rest of the year, but in the summer, it's just frizz city and it becomes a bush. The shorter I go, the bushier it is. So that's why I like to keep it relatively long even though I'm past the age for wearing long hair. Okay, so I got the baby rickrack on while I was talking about my hair. Now I'm gonna use my Fabri-Tac on this just to be sure because I know this will work. I wanted to put a word at the bottom and this came from that stamp block that I have with all the words on it. This. I wanted to use the word sweet. I knew sweet was in here, but it's vertical. So then I went with the word delight. And I had this little metal 
plate and it had holes in it in the corners so I added these these are like um, eyelets but there's no hole so it's like a cross between a brad and an eyelet those and um, so I put some green ones on there So I thought what I would do is start putting in on the pages that I have ready for the other journal, start putting in some of the elements that I already have, some things we've made, fabric flips and some of the ephemera that I have, and then see what I need to make. If I need to make more tags or pockets or booklets or whatever, I just want to start with what I have instead of making stuff and then ending up with more than I need. All right. And I'm going to add this book plate. This is the Distress Oxide um, Festive Berries ink. I will confess, I had the Reader's Digest book plate that came out of this Reader's Digest book. And I glued it on and I had it all decorated up with my stamped and fussy cut berries that I worked so hard on. And then I closed the book cover and realized I had done it again. I had the book flipped this way. And I did my book plate and the pretty berries and stuff up here. And I was so pleased with how it looked. And then I closed it and it was like that. So I pulled off. I rescued these. Because I worked hard coloring them. I, I have to cut a little more there too. Didn't really finish cutting them out before I glued them on. I worked hard on those things. I didn't want it to go to waste. The book plate, I couldn't pull off. I mean, it got torn when I took these off. So I glued this down and had to add an extra berry assemblage over here to, for where the paper tore. This was just to have three, you know, so I could have a an odd number on the page. This is where I had to cover up and here. So, <laughs> I, I wasted that Reader's Digest book plate. It was pretty plain anyway, which is why I added the berries to it. Oh, I think I should use my art glitter glue for this. That's what I did the first time, and apparently it works pretty well because it hadn't dried yet, but it was stuck pretty good. But it was still wet enough that I was able to pull it up. Whoops, I still didn't cut that out. Oh well. berry to her flower but I'm not sure where that disappeared to This cover is done. Just need to make the pages for it. And I have six pages, scrapbook paper pages already cut. Okay, now on to this book. Set the cover aside. I have my pages cut and assembled and I sewed lace on a couple
couple of the edges, two edges in each signature. So the papers that I used are scrapbook paper, green ledger paper, this red um, grid paper that was on a roll. Um, I got it for I got this whole big roll for three dollars at the flea market a few years ago, two or three years ago. So I have a lot of it. Um, this pink dyed paper, which I believe I got from Nine of Crones. Yeah, it just says soft pink. It doesn't say what it was dyed with. Um, this is the digital paper from Alphabet Store, the Alphabet Store. Wrapping paper, this is scrapbook paper, another piece of the pink dyed paper, the digital, and a piece of stationery that I just got in Happy Mail. So that's what is in each of the signatures. Um, the stationery is different in each one. This one is a post-a-note card. And I don't have enough stationery for all of the journals, at least not strawberry journal. Strawberry stationery. That one. So maybe I'll look through my stationery to see if I have something else that I could use for the other two journals. So what do I have that I need to include in this? I have strawberry pockets. These little pockets. I sewed the uh, little digital cards on. I showed where I had cut all a whole stack of these little bags, but I sewed these onto it. And now I can glue them closed. I did a video yesterday that I decided not to publish, so I forget what I talked about in that video. I talked about these a little bit in that video. I just didn't think there was anything good enough in there for to warrant putting it on my channel, so I didn't. Okay, so now I can find a place to put them. Um, I also I want to get my fabric flips and have a place for them too. Just don't know. Here they are. Let's do the fabric flips first. I usually, not always, but I like to put them on a patterned page or a book page that you wouldn't normally write on. And I can put a flip on there and then you can, I, I often will put something underneath it that you can, this one you can actually write on that page, it's light enough. Sometimes I will glue um, a guest check or something that you can write on underneath the flip. So I will put that flip there. nice there. I love those colors. I think this is paper that I got this in a happy mail and I think someone just took a photo of their berries in the berry baskets and printed it. I think that's what it is. It's a lovely page, isn't it? little journal and I am missing one or I didn't make enough or I might use this. This was a pot holder that I got at the flea market and it wasn't very well made. It's kind of wonky there. There's a stain there so I'm debating on whether I want to 
use it as a flip in the fabric journal. We'll see. And I also have some clusters here to use. I think we could do that here. I'll do that a little more. I made some elements that I'm using in all four journals. The Domestics Art Journal is different from these, but I used some homemade elements that I don't normally use in a domestic arts type of journal. But I created enough for all four journals. And so we had some of these little sack things in that journal and I used these pieces that came out of um, photo albums to fit into that little pocket. They work perfectly. don't want to use that one because it has a date on it. I can put washi tape on it, but I'll use that in something else. Probably something I glue it down to. So I'll just fold it in half and slip it in there. This paper um, was a little bit curly, and then when I sewed the lace on it got curlier, but I'm hoping that having it in the book pressed together will flatten it out better. Put a red one on that page. Did I make that one a tuck spot? Nope. I don't think I will. We had a couple of pretty hefty thunderstorms yesterday. I love thunderstorms. However, I had my hair appointment downtown Athens at 2.30 and the salon had moved from where I thought it was years ago probably, but I hadn't been there in a very long time. And it, ha it started to rain and by the time I got down there to Athens, it was pouring, pouring, pouring buckets. And the salon wasn't where I thought it was, so I pulled out my phone and looked at Google. And it was just on the next street over. So I went over there and st still couldn't find it. It said Elmira Street. And I parked in the municipal parking near where Google showed me that it was. And I was right across the street from the restaurant that I could see on the Google map. But I couldn't find the the salon, and it was pouring buckets. I was soaked in just a minute. So I, my daughter had just been there earlier in the day, so I called her and I said, where is the clip joint? And she told me, go down to um, the Children's Depot and go around the corner. Well, around the corner isn't on Elmira Street anymore, but the address was Elmira Street. So it only took a few minutes from getting out of my car to actually getting there, but by then I was drenched all the way through. I mean, all the way through. I had to change everything when I got home. So in the meantime, I sat in their chair getting my hair cut, just soaked through to the skin. My shoes and socks were completely wet because the puddles just huge puddles to even cross the street and I couldn't avoid them and I was walking in water. <laughs> but I got my hair cut. This is wrapping paper that I stuck to some cardstock and I didn't sew around it yet. But that would make a nice pocket right there. I was going to sew around it and add some rickrack or something there. I want to round the corner before I sew around it. So I'll be 
obviously I'm not going to do that right now because I'm not at my sewing machine. Okay, some other elements that I have to add are these, a corner tuck spot, these little collage pockets that we made, and tags, and then I've got lots of cards, so I'll have to have pockets to put the cards into. So, this is a napkin Mod Podge to this. I'm going to round, well, once I decide where it's going to go, I'll round one of the corners. I think for here, I will add a piece of pink I get a pink guess check so you can write on it, but still see the strawberries around it. these tiny little tags too. I need to make sure I have something to use them in. I can put one in here. I didn't know it would be so hard to put it in there. Oh well, I'll tuck it in there later. <clears throat> I'm looking for something to embellish this page. These are stickers from the Antiquarian sticker book. This is, um, I used one of my strawberry stamps stamp onto this paper that came out of a craft book, I think, and it's quilting border patterns. It's got tape, so you can tape it down onto whatever it is you want to mark. But I thought it would be fun to just stamp a strawberry on it, or a bunch of strawberries. This stamp avoided most of the markings, so I'll Tear it out instead of fussy cutting it, and you can still see markings on it. Because that's the fun part. Is that what I want to put there? I think so. Wonder if that means it's three or four. I lose track of time. Oh good, it's only three. Okay. Um, I think I'll put this over here so I will round this corner. And I will sew it. It's quite sturdy and I, I just am happier with the sewing keeping it secure instead of hoping the glue keeps it secure, which it would. I'm sure the glue would, but I'm going to sew it. And then I can use, insert one of these cards that I have. Um, so Let's go beyond the middle signature to find a place for one of these little pockets. Now, this book is the narrowest book, I believe. So I want to make sure I have pockets that will fit that. That one fits. 
that one fits and that one fits okay so these will get set aside with that book cover and the fabric one is has larger pages so this one is a bigger page uh, pocket this one oh I think I'm missing one so I have two for the fabric journal so I could put one of those on and tuck one of these tags in there and a card but I think I want to do a little bit of stenciling on some of these white pages I don't want to do distress ink I want the berries to be have fresh pages to be on so I just want to keep it really really simple I just got this one that could look like burlap and dots I thought they would be fine paper to work on. I should have done that before I glued that pocket on, but I didn't. So I'll just do a little bit of stenciling. buried it. Again, the festive berries. I think I'll do the dots in that. Oh. Um, here. against something else and it wasn't on my table it was on the floor leaning on my table so when I jiggled the table it made it rattle so sorry about that I just that stuff bugs me I, I'm doing a little more than I wanted to here I'm gonna add some yellow I think Squeeze lemonade. That looks like strawberry lemonade. Which I love. Got this paper here. I'm just going to do all the pages the same, but maybe not complete coverage like I just did. little patches.
Must be I just can't stand the white spaces. Digitals. The other ones will have white on the backs of these pages. Their front signature page is white. Just not that one. I'm not going to do all the pages in this video. This is the last one I'll do in this video. Okay, so these packets and things, they all go in another, a different signature. So that's what I have prepared. Let's see what else I have to work with. I have this. Um, came, I cut it from a magazine and I need to glue it to some cardstock and cut it out. But that would be a cute tuck spot. It might have to go in the fabric one, though, because that's a little bigger. Yeah, we'll put this one with the fabric cover. These are cut from wrapping paper, so they would make a cute tuck spot. I have a couple of those. Is that better? I have this paper that printed by mistake from my printer so I can glue this to that side and this will be glued down so you won't see that side this is from some strawberry shortcake wrapping paper a bit of strawberry wrapping paper so I was thinking of making a booklet with wrapping paper on the cover like a scrap booklet I'll show you what I mean I think I'll put this here it'll be a tuck spot there so we'll have a pocket on both sides maybe put it over here I don't always select the inserts while I'm doing the pockets and things, but I have so many albums and so many pieces, I want to make sure things get distributed relatively um, evenly between the journals. This is cute. This was on an envelope. Um, 
I think it, Mary was the one that sent this to me, and I took it off. She gave me some of that wrapping paper, too. And I, I thought it was too cute to not use. And this part got torn, but I can cover that. So I want to use this as a tuck spot somewhere. Right there. So I'm going to cut it a little differently. But her head, she must have been at the top of the page or, or whatever, because her head was flat. So I, it does need to be covered with something. <sighs> Gotta try something silly. Silly is good, right? Put a basket of berries on her head. Would be would have been fun to put that strawberry shortcake on her head, but I don't have a whole image of strawberry shortcake. Oh, I do have more stationery. Couple pieces anyway. Um. Yeah, I guess I'm going to try the basket of berries. Is that cute or does it look, just look dumb? I don't know. I'm not known for being silly, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that's silly or stupid. Um, I just put some washi tape or something over there. Yeah, I'm just going to do the washi tape. This is a nice sticky washi tape. And it's one of my oldest ones. That looks fine. I'll just do something else with that. It's a beautiful postcard. I think I got that in a happy mail. It's a little big for that.
beautiful piece of scrapbook paper. It's the only little piece I have. Also got that in a Happy Mail. This is a little tag that somebody made for me. That looks cute in there. I might want that in something shorter though. I'll at least put this in and there, there'll probably be something else in there too. Moving on. Figure out where we're going to put the little fabric cluster. We have the flip in the first half of the signature, so I'll put this here. Okay, we have pocket. Another pocket. Three pockets in the first half, four in the first half of the signature. And then in the back we have one. So I at least need one more because I have so many cards and things to put in pockets anyway. I could use one of the recipe cards as a pocket, but I've got a piece of wrapping paper backed onto cardstock. That's a lot of berries on that paper, but they're so tiny it it kind of, if I tried to put this on a print like that, it wouldn't work. But on that print, I think it does. So I'm putting well, wrapping paper on wrapping paper here. So I don't want this pocket to be too heavy because the wrapping paper that it's going on isn't very heavy. So I use a lightweight paper to back this onto. I don't have a fabric pocket in here. I think I need to put a fabric pocket in. Because I have a lot of strawberry fabrics too. How's my time? Oh, I'm way over what I normally do. So let's just close out this video. I'm going to just lightly fussy cut around here, not get in too close, and glue it to. Uh, maybe I'll put it on some vellum and then make a pocket. I need something on this page. So you will see what else I do in the next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a creative day today. Bye-bye.